Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Settle down. Please be quiet. Look this way. Thank you. That's very good. Excellent. Welcome to Religious Education. My name is Mr. Walker, and this class will be very different to any class you will take. Not only because we will talk about really interesting questions, and a lot of the time, I don't even know the answer to the questions we will talk about. But also because I am very interested in your education and your future. And I want us to work together to grow as individuals. I want us to know about ourselves. This idea, know thyself, is at the center of this class. And don't worry if you don't know what know thyself means, you will do as we continue. So let's have a look at what we're going to do in this class. What we will do. So we're going to learn about ourselves and we're going to search for answers to some of the most complex questions. Ruby, can you read that first question? Why are we here? Yeah, okay. Ruby, why, why are you here? Why are you at this school? Okay, very good. You want to learn? You have to be here? Good. Why am I here? Okay, that's an interesting question. Why am I here? What's the point of me being at this school? Okay, very good. Now let's think about it in a bigger picture. Why are we here on this planet? What is the point of us? What are we going to do with our time on this planet? What difference will we make to the world? So we're going to look at those questions and also things like, how did we get here? What does good and evil mean? How was the world created? What happens when we die? All of these very interesting questions. But not only are we going to do that, which is a lot, it doesn't end there. We are going to learn about ourselves, and that includes developing our character, finding out what we believe and what we don't believe, and we're going to learn how to learn. We're going to become excellent, expert students. And I mean we, me and you together. We are all going to learn. But the first thing we're going to do we're going to look at that little phrase at the beginning of the class, know thyself. What does it mean? What do you think know thyself means? You spend 30 seconds with your partner talking about know thyself. What do you think it means? Okay, very good. So basically it means know yourself, be self-aware, understand your strengths and your weaknesses. Why is it important to understand your strengths and weaknesses? Yes, Joe, can you answer the question? Yeah, because you know what you're good at and what you might be bad at. So why is it important to know what you are bad at, especially when you're at school? Yes, so you can improve. Very good. So let's now look at you as a student. I'd like you, with your partner, to write down all the things you think make a good student. And you've got about two minutes for that. So with your partner, write down all of the things that make a good student. Okay, very good. Now, turn around and talk to the two people behind you. So you're making a group of four and compare your answers. See if you've got any of the same answers. Great, okay. Now back to working in your pairs. And I'd like you to think about what makes a good teacher. Again, you've got two minutes. Think about what makes a good teacher. Okay, very good. Now turn around, and talk to the people behind you. Form a group of four, again, Discuss what you think makes a good teacher. Okay, so let's have a look at what we've got. Um, a good student. 
Anybody got any ideas what a good student is? Yeah, very good. Hard working. Pay attention. Show respect. Oh yes, very good. Help each other. Mm, yes, that's right. They're not late. They're on time. No talking. Um, yeah. Well, mm, kind of. We want you to talk. That's the only way we're going to learn is if we talk about things and we discuss things. But we also want you to show respect to each other. So we don't want you to talk when other people are talking. But talking's okay. Um, okay, let's have a look at what makes a good teacher. Somebody who's fair, kind, fun, consistent. What do you mean by consistent? Ah, okay, okay. So, doesn't change the way they act. They're the same with other people. Yeah, good. Treat everybody fairly. Good. Oh yeah, that's very important. Helping students, yes. Should understand people. Uh-huh. Hard working again. And show respect. Good. So we've got a few things there that make a good student and make a good teacher. If I can remember to be all of the things in the good teacher column and you can remember to be all of the things in the good student column, we should have a very productive class. And I think I can take all of those factors and turn it into one rule for this class. Anything that disrupts your learning is forbidden in this classroom. Anything that disrupts your learning is forbidden. So my promise to you is that I will do everything I can to make sure you get a good education. That's the only thing that's important to me. The most important thing for me is to make sure you get a good education. So let's have a look at um, being self-aware. If you are highly self-aware, you can evaluate yourself. You can make any changes you need to make to improve. You know what your strengths are, you know what your weaknesses are, and you can find ways to improve yourself. And that is one of the main reasons why you are at school. You want to improve yourself. You want to get better. You want to develop more skills. They could be academic skills, they could be social skills, they could be sports skills, but you want to improve yourself. So to become self-aware, you need to spend a little bit of time thinking about yourself. What I'd like you to do now is individually is spend time writing down your answers to these questions. Okay. Have you ever taken a moment and thought about who you are? Why do you do the things you do? Why do you work better in some situations than in others? For example, you might work better when you're talking with other people, or you might work better when you are just sitting down in a quiet place reading a book. Why do you like one person but dislike another person? What is it about their character that makes you like them? dislike them. How would you describe yourself? If you had to choose three words to describe yourself, what words would they be? And have you ever spent time looking at yourself and thinking about your character? So that's quite deep questions. I'll give you five minutes to try and write down your answers to those questions. Make sure that you write down three words that describe yourself, okay? Very good, okay. So today, you are going to do all of those things and keep those answers secret. We don't need to share those answers. They're for you to look on and reflect. So today, we're going to do a test, a personality test called True Colors. You will answer very simple questions about your personality 
and according to your answers you will be given a colour. There are four colours. Each colour represents a personality type. You should answer the questions truthfully. And I always want you to question why people ask you to do things, especially in school. It's important for you to understand why a teacher is asking you to do something. So why am I asking you to do this? Well, it will help you understand yourself. It will help you understand other people. And a little secret here, RE is all about understanding. So it's going to help you in this class. It will make you a more well-rounded person. You will have a greater understanding of your learning style. That means you can then choose how you learn most effectively. So this is your personality test. You've got a number of rows and then you've got four boxes in each row. Each of the boxes has, a sta has four statements in them. You have to score each of the four boxes in each row from most to least as best describes you. So we've got box A. I am active. I like sports. I make quick decisions. I like variety in my life. If that is most like you, you would give it a four. If it is least like you, you would give it one. If it's a lot like you, you give it three. And if it's um, a little bit like you, you would give it two. So it should look something like this. You can only use one four in each row. One three, one two, one one. So you should end up having a sheet of paper that looks a little bit like that. You must decide which statements are most like you, least like you, a lot like you, or a little bit like you. Okay. Do you understand? Connor, tell me what you've got to do. Okay, very good. Ruby, what do you have to do? Good. Tamana, what do you have to do? Excellent. And once you have completed the rows, right at the bottom there's four boxes, add up the scores for each box to reveal your colour. So in total orange score you would add up box A, box H, box K, box N and box S. That will give you a total score. On this example we can see the total score is 20. That means that that orange colour is that person's strongest colour. Their weakest colour is gold. Green is quite high and blue is quite low. Okay, so I'll give you um, 10 minutes to do that. If you finish early, that's okay. But take your time, really think about those statements. Make sure you choose one that's the most like you, least like you, a little bit like you, and a lot like you. Okay, you can begin. Have you finished? Good, excellent. So what does it all mean? Well, let's just have a quick look at what each colour represents. You've all got your main colour now. So if your main colour was blue, that means that you value relationships with people. If your main colour was gold, you value responsibility and duty. If your main colour was green, then intellectual competence. You like learning. You're interested in learning and books. If your colour was orange, you are a big fan of freedom. Okay, so have a little think about that. Does that reflect you? People who are blue, do you really value relationships with other people, with your friends, with your family? But let's not forget, you represent all colours. And the colour which has the lowest score is the most important. You need to concentrate on understanding this colour. Why is it important to understand that colour, the one that's the lowest? Think about people you're going to be working with. Okay, if you are a orange colour and you value freedom and you have to work with somebody who values tradition and duty and responsibility, there might be a clash in your personalities. So you really need to understand that person so you can work with them effectively. And you can experience growth by taking risks. 
By exploring a part of you that you know the least about, you can grow as a person. So let's dig deeper into these colours. Who has orange as their strongest colour? Hands up if you've got orange as your strongest colour. Okay, all the orange people stand in that corner of the room. Who has blue as their strongest colour? Okay, hands up. Good, go and stand in that corner. Who has green as their strongest colour? Okay, you go into that corner. And gold, gold people. Okay, that should be everybody else into that corner. Okay, there you go. Juho, what is your highest colour? Okay, so you've got blue and green, joint one. Okay, you decide where you would like to go. Blue team or green team, you decide. Good. Okay, now I'm going to put you into groups of four. And you are all going to be in the same colour group. So blue people will be together, green people will be together, etc. So now we have an orange group, a gold group, a green group, and a blue group. I'm going to give you some extra information about your colour. You can see these cards that I'm going to give out to you. I want you to read the information and discuss it and see if that represents you. So for example, if we look at blue, they like spending time with other people. Blue, pe blue team, do you agree with that? Okay. Look at the information and discuss if the colour represents you. Remember you represent all colours. No colour is better than another. So spend a little bit of time discussing these colours. Okay, very good. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix up the groups. So you're going to have people from different colours in one group. So we're going to have one gold person, one orange person, one green and one blue person. I'm going to mix up the groups. So you're all working with people who have got different personalities to you, which should make it very interesting. So in your new groups, you're going to create a poster about the colour I will give you. Okay. Why do you think I have mixed the groups up? Yes, Kayla, why do you think I have mixed the groups up? Yes, so you can see what it's like working with other people who are different from you. Very good. So this is what you're going to do in your group. You've got a piece of paper and you've got some pens. I'd like you to create a poster and I would like you to have on that poster just one or two words about what are the strengths values and key characteristics of your colour. You can use the information from the sheets on your desk. What causes stress for people in your colour? How do other people perceive your colour? How do other people see you? So green people, you might think of yourself as very intelligent, but how do other people see you? And which famous person represents your colour? Choose one person, either living or dead, who you think represents your colour. So, for example, blue people, you meant to value relationships. Can you think of any famous person who values relationships? Is very friendly. And I'd like you to create a motto or a slogan that describes your colour. For example, something like, um, just do it. You're going to have 20 minutes to make your poster and then I'd like you to present your findings to the class. If you have any questions please ask me. I'll come and walk around and help you. You can begin now. Okay, that was excellent. Some very good presentations there. Very good. And we'll put these posters up on the wall. And what I would like you to do is, throughout your time at this school, not just in my class, but in every class, I'd like you to think about how you work with other people, how you work with yourself. Try to reflect on your learning and your personality 
and try to improve yourself every day. But we have a little bit of time before we finish. I'd like us to think about that activity only has four colors, green, blue, gold, and orange. Do you think those colors cover everybody? Can you think of a fifth color? What would that person value? Okay, in your groups, you can have a little discussion of that.